Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Good Shoes. Today we are going on a deep dive into the world of software development. In this video, we will be exploring two essential topics the software development lifecycle or SCLC and creating an effective, efficient end to end. If you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and click the notification bell icon. So first, we're going to rename the project to CI CD. And then uh, once we have uh, the process in place, we're going to start with the Kanban board, which is a Jira or a Zoo DevOps board or any other board which you are very much familiar working on. So the work item from the board is created uh, to start uh, we identify the task whether it's a feature bug fix or enhancement then uh, define the objective for each item link the task to the user stories or requirement in the project management tool set the deadline and assign this to a team member so that will be a developer who could be writing the code once the tasks are assigned to the developer he begins uh, in the stage of uh, you know understanding the task and working along and create a dedicated uh, branch for the task write a modular or reusable code run local test and commit code with detail message and in this process so let me explain some of the process for the branching strategy developer usually work on a feature branch or a bug fix in a dedicated branch uh, separate from the main code base uh, main or master this is isolated prevent incomplete or unstable code from affecting the main project so also he would do a local testing before pushing it to the shared repository let's take it a shared repository to be a git repository a version control so the f and then he would create a pull request pr uh, the developer initially uh, initiates a pull request in the repository typically targeting the main branch or the other integrated branches make sure we have the description clear understanding of what made changes bug fixes or feature implemented to merge that into the git repo and there will be also a, a you know the approval gates which is like a code review uh, any team member who is designated reviewers examine the code uh, for the PR uh, like performing some of the things like readability and structure code efficiency security best practices and checks which could be followed so once the request is made to the approver so that's the approver icon And this will be like an automated checks as well where we can go ahead and create uh, once we have an approval gates in place because uh, we can also inbuild the feedback uh, within that approval as well like leave a comment on the PR address uh, any unnecessary changes or push update code to the PR so to the branch So once approved, all automatic checks have been passed. Uh, so the team may have the rules set for the approvals, uh, for the multiple approvals if required, and then use a trigger to merge into the main branch. And then the trigger would initiate to run the pipeline itself. And we can automate this after the checks have been completed. So once it's triggered to build upon the code merge, uh, 
it will go through some of the process of uh, compiling code with dependencies and run unit and integration test but currently we would follow some of the best practices for the ci cd coverage some of the reports and you know go through it and in the build process in a ci cd pipeline is a series of automating testing so in the continuous integration it's a practice of uh, automatically integrating some code changes into the shared repository and uh, once the build job is tasked from the pipeline it that compiles the code into executable form so there are a few dependencies that will get installed as well uh, just before the dependencies what happens when the pipeline triggers is may start a various triggers such as push to the branch or pull request or trigger to an environment change so so in our process there is a build solution and uh, in the build solution that's like dependencies installing required by the project such as libraries modules may involve like uh, npm install or for example node for node.js pip install for python or uh, also for other languages there are a few project manage, uh, packet managers which get installed and it goes through And running test is a key part of the build process itself. Uh, like there is a unit test in place uh, and regression test run for a longer duration time to check with microservices or modular part. The next section is validate and scan. Quality scan, uh, you can use uh, uh, the third party tools similar to SonarQ, perform static code analysis, examine code, packaging and publishing artifacts. So once validated, the application is packaged and artifacts. Uh, so the application code is bundled in the deployable format such as jar, war file for Java, Docker images for containers, zip files or other binaries suitable for deployment environments. And also we can version and tag them uh, for based on the build number or date identifying to be into our artifacts. And then we could publish this artifacts to a repository uh, finalizing the build process. And this will smooth the transition to deploy stages. So that's the artifactory. We can utilize some of the artifactory uh, based on our needs nexus is one of them and there are other few uh, you know with uh, azure devops there is another artifactory as well and let's link to them uh, to the artifactory as well so there is approval gate in place uh, which we are look, building here before deploying the artifactory to the production or development uh, environments or qa environments like there's a manual approver uh, a designated reviewer uh, who can be like a product manager, team lead, tech lead, uh, reviews the deployment request and manually approves it and then automates. And then moving on to the release uh, path, the release pipeline job. So in this uh, part, it coordinates and automate the deployment for, for of artifact to different environments like development, staging, production. In this step, the deployment is executed according to the configuration which are defined in the pipeline. There are a few things which we have to keep in mind like configuration management, environment specific settings, deployment automation, uh, depending upon what deployments are being run through. It might be a Kubernetes deployment, serverless application, traditional server deployments. In our case, it will be a development uh, deployment uh, for this stage. Uh, so that the artifact is deployed to the development environment for further testing and validate for by developer or tester So the development team or the development environment uh, closely resemble the production environment 
allows the developers to test new features or changes before these are released. A monitor as well to ensure it runs correctly and efficiently. So the development environment is essentially to catch issues earlier, uh, prevent downtime and maintain optimal performance. There are a few things in this we can uh, you know, filter it through metric collection, log monitoring, alerting. Uh, we can set those alerts from the critical metrics such as high error rates or usually resource consumption. And the next part is the monitoring solution. So for example, like Splunk, Datadog, Grafana, Prometheus, the several tools can monitor application, providing data visualization alerts and detailed insights into application health. Splunk, a log management tool that provides powerful analytics, alerting and visualizing features. Datadog, a cloud native monitoring and analytic platform that provides metrics, traces and logs for a comprehensive review of application performance. Grafana, an open source platform used with data sources like Prometheus to create real-time dashboards and alerts. Let's do a quick recap. We covered the entire SDLC process from work item creation to development and deployment, as well as setting up the CI CD pipeline with all the necessary steps, like code reviews, testing, and monitoring with the right tools and process. You can ensure a smooth and automated flow from code to the production. I've also added few tools and names, the third party softwares, which could be helpful for you to build the complete CI CD process. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content like this. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.